Greetings. I welcome you to study with me a topic titled A Portrait of a Disciple. And this is series number one. Uh, the passage that I have selected is Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20. It goes like this As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. As we start reading this passage, we'll be struck with uh, several unusual elements. Let's list a few of them. Unlike the other schools where we are used to, here Jesus is the initiator of uh, discipleship. In other words, Jesus is the initiator of the call. In those days, uh, for students to enroll into rabbinic schools, they had to apply like what we do today. And uh, then they will have, uh, uh, the, they will have several uh, admission process. Students would be the initiators of discipleship. Whereas here, Jesus is the initiator of discipleship. Uh, Jesus is saying in the next verse, verse 17, Come, follow me. You know, the unusual thing in this verse is Jesus is saying the chief allegiance of these guys he is calling for discipleship is not to the Torah, but to himself. You know, if you think about rabbinic schools, when students join for discipleship, they would initiate the process and they didn't have to uh, be loyal to the teachers, but their primary loyalty or allegiance is to Torah. Whereas here, chief allegiance is not to Torah, but to Jesus himself. In other words, the content of Jesus' school is Jesus himself. And Jesus boldly uh, says here, come, follow me. Unlike the rabbinic traditions, Fishermen were not asked to exhibit any special skills or qualifications. In other words, uh, they were not asked to write an entrance exam or exams uh, like GRE or uh, TOEFL. Uh, Jesus goes and he gives them a call and he himself is the initiator. Unlike the rabbinical traditions, the fishermen were not asked to exhibit any special skill or qualification. If uh, Jesus had demanded those things, uh, f fishermen like Peter or Andrew would never become a disciple of Jesus. See here Jesus is saying, follow me. The discipleship will not take place in a classroom, nor does it follow a particular curriculum or a module or a semester. You know, in rabbinic schools, they would go and enroll like something uh, what we do today. Uh, maybe for a, uh, a duration of three years or five years until we get our degree. But Jesus is saying, come follow me. Jesus is not giving them any curriculum or a time period. And, um, uh, you know, there is no classroom exercise. Discipleship, according to Jesus, will not take place in a classroom or it will not follow any specific curriculum. Uh, but uh, the other side essential elements of discipleship here is a relationship with Jesus. He said, come and follow me. And Jesus, uh, in verse 17, he says, and I will make you fishers of men. The word follow is taking a position after Jesus. You know, that is what we say, uh, we, we read in verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him or they took a position after Jesus. Uh, the primary uh, uh, you know, qualification or of, uh, the beginning step of discipleship is a relationship with Jesus. The word behind in uh, verse 17a is a position of a disciple. You know, we see this one in other passages where uh, Mary in Luke chapter 10 verse 18, 38 to 42, she sits at Jesus' feet. It is a classic example of a disciple. And here, 
Uh, Jesus is saying, come, follow after me. Although the translation does not capture, but Jesus is saying, take a position behind me. Uh, so the first step towards discipleship, uh, according to Jesus, is not to follow a curriculum, not to uh, write some entrance exams, but to have a relationship with him, that is, to take a position after Jesus. Christology and discipleship are uh, interconnected. In other words, you know, if someone wants to be a disciple, it will not happen just in a classroom, just because a person enrolls in a seminary or a Bible school, and when they finish their uh, um, three-year or five-year program, they don't automatically become disciple. According to this passage, it is through uh, taking a position after Jesus and, you know, begin to learn about him. Um, in verse 17, he says, I will make you fishers of men. You know, in discipleship, active promotion is for Jesus' mission. You know, G discipleship is not to build a career or to become a clergyman or to become a mission leader, but uh, this, the primary purpose of discipleship is active promotion of Jesus' mission. Jesus is saying, I'm going to make you fishers of men. You know, Peter and Andrew were uh, experts in uh, fishes, you know, they were fishermen. They could uh, tell the details about the fishes, but they had no clue about fishing men. And Jesus is actually, uh, you know, converting them from one profession to another profession. And in this, according to verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him. Uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, one of the steps towards discipleship is total commitment to his cause. Jesus is not saying, okay, you come at 8 o'clock and go back at 5 o'clock and um, maybe you can do part-time uh, fishing job and also you can be full-time at home. Jesus is giving a call. You, if you want to become a disciple, it is completely different from uh, what you do in a rabbinic school or in a regular school where you initiate a relationship, you write your exams and you get your curriculum and you finish and you become a professional. Whereas the discipleship Jesus is calling is something different where there is an expectation for total commitment. We see that in verse 18 and we also see that in following verses. Let me read here. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. In other words, they, when Jesus gave them a call, they left the father and the hired men and took a position after Jesus. So, uh, some of the essential elements here are a relationship with Jesus, active promotion of Jesus' interest, and a total commitment uh, to his cause. It is not just leaving for a few days, but they left the father and their boats and their hired men, started taking a position after Jesus. So we have to uh, uh, discuss a little bit about the process of becoming a disciple here. You know, process of becoming a disciple is not just, a, uh, you know, one day event or two days event just because they attended a seminar uh, organized by Jesus. It was a long term process. In verse 17, in the second part of uh, the verse, uh, the verb is make. In Hebrew, it is bara. Uh, and uh, Greek, it is poeo, it is, you know, to become. He's saying, you are not now fishers of men, you are not my disciple, but uh, I am calling you for a relationship with me, and the process you will become. So, uh, process of discipleship is, uh, or, you know, uh, becoming a disciple is a long process. For that, there are four immediate uh, or four requirements here. One is a radical separation from formal allegiance. 
in order to be free for the new allegiance. Uh, former allegiance were commitment to the family, commitment to their profession, and commitment to uh, uh, the circle of their friends. But Jesus is saying, now if you want to become uh, my disciples, you have to follow me, leaving all of them aside. He's not saying, you know, you should ignore them, but you have to make the first step. You think about another person who came to Jesus and he said, I want to follow you. Jesus says, come on, follow me. But he says, let me just go and bury my father. Although he had good intentions, but he was not willing for a radical separation from all his allegiances, commitment to the family, commitment to his profession, and commitment to his society. But, uh, you know, what is different from that gentleman to Peter, Andrew, James, and John is their radical commitment. They left everything and started following Jesus. You know, a disciple, once he starts following Jesus, he should be free from all encumbrances like nets and families. You know, these encumbrances are good. One has to have a family. One has to have a business. One has to, but, you know, discipleship would not take place if there is no radicalism, if there, is, uh, there are encumbrances or tags tied to this person. What I see in this passage is these guys who were probably successful businessmen, but when they knew that Jesus was calling, they just left everything and followed. And later on, we see they lived with Jesus. You know, if uh, John, Apostle John were to have written First uh, John, then he says, that which we have touched, that which we have seen, uh, that which uh, we walked around with. In other words, he's saying, we lived with Jesus, we ate with Jesus. And, uh, and he was able to talk about Jesus. Probably he was thinking and talking like Jesus. Uh, so so the, uh, um, some of the process by which we become uh, disciple is to be free from encumbrances. And in verse 18, we see immediately, you know, someone said delayed obedience is disobedience. Here also, you know, one of the important requirements in the process of discipleship is immediately, without delay, at once. You know, immediately at once is one of the uh, words or phrases you see in Gospel of Mark and Luke often. When Jesus tells and, uh, you know, it is done immediately without any delay. You know, we read in uh, verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him. They did not uh, think about their family or they did not think about their business all of them are very important. They were not irresponsible people, but they were very serious about the call to which Jesus called. Then the last one, according to this passage, is you know, obedience. Without obedience, discipleship does not take place. You know, faith needs to be an act before it becomes part of life or it, it becomes a content. We, when Jesus called, they obeyed. And that is also another word you see both in Gospel of Mark and Luke repeated. You know, wind and waves obeyed Jesus. Evil spirit obeyed Jesus. If a person knows a lot about Bible, a person has a lot of uh, knowledge about Jesus. But if that person does not have obedience, probably he's not a disciple or she's not a disciple. He's a knowledgeable person. Just because a person finish, uh, finishes three years uh, degree in the seminary or a good Bible school is not a guarantee that that person is going to become a disciple. Discipleship is characterized by obedience. Often obedience is costly. Here it is a costly obedience where he leaves his father. Uh, you know, it, it almost, it's almost like he deserted his father and followed Jesus. And uh, business probably was very profitable.
but he did not think about how much money he was going to lose. He just followed. And it is the power of the uh, call. Um, it's very important for discipleship. Discipleship is an ongoing journey with a teacher. Uh, it doesn't take place just uh, in a day or two. Uh, as we know, at least about three to three and a half years, these disciples lived with Jesus, walked with Jesus, faced all sorts of you know, good and bad experiences. Um, this passage is a, an important passage as far as how we can think about discipleship. As we close this discussion, we have to ask, what are some of the things I can do to become a disciple? Uh, you know, the call of discipleship, as we read in this passage, is descriptive. In other words, we don't, uh, you know, we don't get the call the same way Peter received his call. Everyone's call is different. But there are certain things which are transcontextual and transcultural. Number one, responding to the call. If we want to become a disciple of Jesus, we have to respond to the call to which he calls us to follow him. That is to take a position after Jesus. A lot of people have good intentions and uh, they say, okay, let me go to church or let me give for uh, the cause. All of them are good, but it always starts. Discipleship doesn't start with giving. Discipleship doesn't start with uh, going to church, but discipleship starts with a relationship. And according to John chapter 12, uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 says, you know, whoever believed in Jesus, he gave them the privilege to be children of God. And uh, that is a relationship. You know, if we want to become a disciple of Jesus, we have to find out how we can become a friend of Jesus or how we can have a relationship with Jesus. Number two, we have to attach, attach ourselves with the teacher. Uh, it is not like a kabaddi game. You just go and touch and come back. And then you know, when we get another chance, we go and touch and come back. We have to attach ourselves. Although Jesus is not physically present with us, but he is always with us. That is what we read in the scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. I will be with you till the end of this world. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We have to attach ourselves with the teacher so that we will become a disciple. Number three is accept his authority. Jesus says, uh, Jesus said to Peter, come, follow me. And Peter and Andrew, although they had so many other things, but uh, they accepted Jesus' authority and uh, they started following him. Unless and until uh, a Christian accepts the authority of Jesus, we don't become a disciple. You know, we can say Jesus should become not only our Savior, but also our Lord. And finally, imitate Jesus' example. So we, we, we learn, uh, children learn from the parents. And as children grow up, they imitate the parents. Uh, students imitate their favorite teachers. Uh, church members favorite, uh, um, imitate their favorite preacher. In the same way, if we are serious about having a relationship with Jesus and accepting his authority and following him, then intentionally we should start imitating him. Slowly it will become the content and part of our life. So this uh, small passage is a good place to start with to discuss about the portrait of a disciple. Here, Peter starts his life. And in the next session, we will talk about Peter himself. God bless.